Hello everyone, Vincent Desrosiers here. I'm really happy to share with you a little tool that I've been working on, the VD Stone Cracks, a filter that can generate cracks on the fly, from custom input, add structure input, or disable the cracks to use it as a sculpt filter. Here is what to expect when downloading the tool that runs on Substance Designer 12.4.0 and above. So basically you will have access to an archive and if you just extract here, you will have access to an SBS, that is a documentation graph calling little instances of the tool itself. The tool is here, it's an SBS archive and you will have also the marketing images to showcase what you got. So opening the documentation tool here, documentation graph, you will have a little graph with info with every preset that you can see here and how to build the same type of structure or effect. Now, moving on to using the tool itself, if we just go here and create a new graph, we can just get here and basically drag and drop the tool. There is no difference between that guy and the tools that are inside the documentation here. Those are just, again, instances of the main tool. So back to the tool here, you have nothing too crazy to do. Just plug it here and it's already working. We can add a little ambient occlusion just to see a little bit more what we are doing. That's going to be pretty much it. So what you can do is that you can just like click, like left click on the tool and you will access here on the right, on the property size side to the different type of parameters I just exposed. So first of all, you will have the cracks pattern. The cracks pattern is built with two different patterns, the pattern one and pattern two. Uh, I build it that way for you to have access independently to different parts and different size for the cell itself. What you can do here is that you can independently play with the size in X and Y for the two patterns, meaning that you have four little parameters. You can also play with how much of which pattern you want. So pattern one or pattern two is really useful if you have two different size, meaning that you have access to different type of pattern like that. What you can also do is that you can disable or enable what I call the deformation that is basically finishing the chisel filling of the big shape. If I go here, just for the example, and I just open a cell four, let's say that, and I just go here, um, Let's use a little histo scan. And now let's clamp it like that. Change the size of that little guy here. And we just blend those guys back according to that little mask. So what we have here is that we have a mix of uh, two different cells. And it's basically what is happening inside the tool itself. So if you want, you can even create that outside of the tool because the tool here have an option that is here, the custom crack input. And if you enable it here, you will see that it automatically close all of the option of the built-in cracks. It's because now it's waiting for you to feed that input. Uh, basically, the tool is not working anymore. So if you fit that guy, you will just have access to what you build in here. So you can change independently the, the size of the scale and basically have whatever you want in terms of effect. It's an option you have uh, with the, the stone cracks filter, basically. Something you have also that I found uh, really useful, let's say that those are your cracks and you are okay, but I want to use those, or I don't know, let's say uh, a stone floor. 
So you just go here, create a basic type generator for the example, and we are going to go like, I don't know, something like that. And if you go here, so we just saw the option for the cracks patterns. And if you go here and open the stone structure, you will see that you have the option to enable another input. So we just go ahead, enable that guy. Nothing is happening and it's normal. We need now to feed that structure, that stone structure that we create. So here is the cracks filter, the cracks input for the filter. And here is the stone structure. So we just input that guy here and boom, we have quickly a result. So I found it useful because it allowed me to chisel and sculpt the stone structure, the aging of a stone pattern and the crack itself the same way. It's not mandatory, but something I found useful uh, in some cases. And another aspect of the tool I uh, found interesting and I just exposed is the possibility to, of course, you can play independently with the option of the cracks and the structure itself. So play with the roundness. If you have some artifact or your, like, your structure is too small, you are going to want to play with that little edge roundness. And if you go here and disable the cracks, you will see that you just basically have a, a sculpt filter. So now we can just go here and play with the amount, play with, uh, play with the position. So we can just like create quickly something that could, of course, it's not a final sculpt, but it can really uh, come in handy if you want to have um, medium or big feature like that and just uh, re-inject that in another subgraph. And another uh, set of parameters we have built uh, inside the tool itself is the eight adjustments. So here, for example, we could play with the extrude intensity. So it is just how much the shapes are going through each other and under each other. It's something I like in my personal works to exaggerate, to give more weight and to ground elements a bit more. But you have access to that here. You also have an option that is called the attenuation intensity and it's something really useful because it's going to uh, react a little bit like if you were using a trim smooth border to simplify some shapes so you can keep things like that if you want but you can just push it like that if you just want a few features here and there and i really find that uh, useful in many of my works you will see also that you have access to what I call the slope breakups. So basically the slope breakups are those features, the little triangle you can see here and there, the gradient you have in some corners. So you can enable or disable those and just keep the little, the basic cracks with a few chiseling. But what you can do is that you can also play with the slope breakup amount. So basically you can keep it up to seven which is what it's built inside the tool, but you can go and have half of it, a little less or none at all. So it can come in handy if you just, you want that effect, but a little less, for example. I also uh, expose, it's not really uh, that amazing, but expose the intensity of the normal. If you are using the directly the normal, output here and uh, the format depending on what type of shader you're using and um, that's pretty much it so i hope you will find that tool useful and it can like help you at some point uh, on some of your personal projects and uh, don't hesitate to poke me if you have any question or you want to send me any feedback about like new feature, new tools, or just to tell me if you like it. Have a nice day.